consumer fraud and identity theft. How serious yes. of a problem is that in Illinois right now? Identity theft is a very serious problem, and I think a lot of people started recognizing that during the holiday season when they heard about the large security breach that took place at Target. Well over 100 million people's personal information and credit card and debit card information was stolen. But the reality is that Target's only one of thousands of these security breaches that are taking place all across the country uh, consistently. And so, in addition to having companies do more to better protect our information, the reality is we have to do a better job learning how we can protect our own information because cleaning up in the aftermath of identity theft can be uh, very stressful, very time consuming, and if you don't do it properly, uh, it can also be very costly. So what we have seen over the years is that we've had over 40,000 people turn to the Illinois Attorney General's office seeking help. We have helped over 35,000 people remove over 40, no actually not 40, it's over 26 million dollars worth of fraudulent charges from their credit. And consistently we've seen since 2006 that identity theft is either our number one or number two complaint in terms of volume that comes into the office. So a lot of us have a lot to learn about what we can do to better protect ourselves. Are the people who are running these scams, are they in the U.S. mostly or are they mostly overseas? Well, it's a mix. So in terms of the very large security breaches, a lot of those are coming uh, out of foreign countries, uh, these cyber criminals as we call them. But there are also plenty of people, unfortunately, here in the United States that are accessing our information without authorization and using that without out our authorization. How, how aggressive is your office in going after this stuff? Well, what we're very aggressive in doing is trying to educate people about how they can prevent themselves from being victims of identity theft, working then to help people clean up in the aftermath. But I always think it's a much better policy if we protect people from being victimized in the first place as opposed to put their financial security at risk by not doing that. Do you put people in jail frequently, or is that is that tough to do? Uh, actually, we do. Uh, there are a lot of people who engage in these scams, and it's our criminal division that does a lot of that work, oftentimes with referrals from uh, the Secret Service uh, and other federal investigative agencies. Do you have anything else? Yeah, what are the big uh, scams or issues that are going on right now with, with security? Well, one of the biggest concerns, I think, is when people are going into stores and they're using their credit cards, they're using their debit cards, and they're not realizing that by using their cards so often, every single time a company has that information, there's the potential that there's going to be a cyber criminal out there that's trying to get that information, sell it on the Internet uh, to somebody who's then going to start using it. And so what we say to people is really three things that you can do. One, you can put a transaction alert on your card. So every single time that card is used, you'll be notified. That way you'll find out if somebody used it without authorization. You can immediately turn the card over, call the number on the back, and fix that problem. Two, you still have to consistently actually look at your monthly statements from your bank as well as your credit card statements. And three, I always say to people, you do need to get copies of your credit report because full-blown identity theft is when someone's actually opened up credit in your name. When that happens, it can be very, very difficult to remove, but it can also be very devastating to your own credit, potentially putting you in a position where you're impaired from being able to rent an apartment, purchase a car, get a mortgage loan. So you really have to look after that. You had pointed out Target earlier. Um, how cooperative are these bigger companies in uh, basically trying to prevent those types of things from happening? How good are they at it or how cooperative they are with our well, investigations? <laughs> let's, do, let's do first how cooperative and then you sure. tell me if they're cooperative or not in your investigation. Well, let me tell you, in terms of our investigations, uh, we consistently find that unfortunately there's a lot more that companies could be doing to better protect our information. We frequently see circumstances where personal financial information from customers is not being encrypted, uh, where when there's a known security flaw in the software that that is not being updated, not being fixed, and where they're not siloing information and uh, taking some basic precautions uh, that are really considered best practices. So we see that, unfortunately, consistently. In terms of their cooperation, they are usually cooperative uh, because, again, they have to worry about not just people's personal information, but they have to worry about consumer confidence on an ongoing basis. And I think, as we saw with the target breach, they really did have a significant problem with that.